but I believe that the basis and the future of the world and society starts with the family. And if we can set the family, the parents, the kids, the babies up with love and support in the right kind of capacity, then we can set the future up well um, for generations to come. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to this episode of Non Talks with Krista. Today we talk with Tanisha Redan from the Doula Experience. Man, this was such a great conversation. She walks us through her journey of becoming a doula, when she kind of decided it was for her, and kind of these different circumstances in her life where she realized that she wanted to make birth better for women everywhere. This is gonna be split into two parts. So part one's right now, let's just dive right in. All right, well, thanks for joining me today, Tanisha. I'm so excited to just talk all about the doula experience. So. First, just to get started, can you just tell us a little bit about you, your background, and we'll go from there. My background is definitely varied, and it's kind of a, it's a definitely not a straight path, as I'm sure many people can attest and, and relate to that. But um, I've been a doula for four years. Prior to that, I worked at a charity, and I was working mainly with youth doing speeches on stages and traveling, and it was quite the um, adventurous career. Um, but I realized a couple of years into it, you know, I was like, you know, I'm telling these amazing young kids to follow their passions, you know, to believe in themselves. And I think there's a, re a season for everything. And I think I was coming up to that, at least with this company. And I was like, you know, I'm, I'm telling these kids to do this thing, but am I doing it for myself? And so when I really sat down and, and thought about what my passions were, it all kind of culminated with, you know, I'll tell you the backstory, but becoming a doula and doing this as a business, doing this as my soul work and really kind of, you know, taking my own advice, right? So um, it really started with, you know, I'm an older sister of, of two younger sisters. And so I was pretty aware pregnancy and postpartum when, my, when I was younger. And um, because I'm so much older, when my mom had me, we were on a lot of family family lived close by, grandparents were younger, lots of aunties and, aunties and uncles. So that postpartum period maybe had been a little bit different for her then. But when my sisters came along after not having babies for a long time and moving away from a lot of our family support systems, that postpartum period was a, a lot different for her. And thankfully she kind of had me and I was so excited to be a big sister. I'd wanted to do everything yeah, I'll change the diaper. I'll do this. I was totally happy to do it. But I do remember that all she wanted to do was feed my sister, the first one that came along, and read Harry Potter. That's it. Looking back, I'm like, yeah, there might have been a little bit of some postpartum mood something going on there, um, which, you know, was never diagnosed and nobody really said or did anything about. And talking to her about it now, she's like, yeah, I definitely think there was something going on. So just seeing how different of an experience you can have when you have that support or don't have it really stuck with me. Um, and I've always been great with kids. I've always been great with, with babies. And so I was like, how can I make my own small impact in the world? And if this is it, this is, this is what it is for me. You know, some people might not see it as a big deal. You know, climate change is really important and all these, all these other things are really important. But I believe that the basis and the future of the world and society starts with the family. And if we can set the family, the parents, the kids, the babies up, with love and support in the right kind of capacity, then we can set the future up well um, for generations to come. And so that's kind of my own way to be an activist and you know, birth work is my resistance, you know, and all of that kind of thing. When you kind of decided that you wanted to get into birth work and become a doula, what's that like story of, you, you sent me a really awesome story of like how you initially made that, you know, start into becoming a doula. So I kind of want to just like hear a little bit more about that. So um, while I was at university or college, I was really involved in the diversity center. And so in the diversity center, I, I was the vice president of the Association of Black Students, but there was also the Rainbow Center and the Women's Center and the D Indigenous Students Center. And so I went to the Women's Center and they had two sessions that were, I was really interested in and had no idea about. One was about birth control and alternative forms of birth control. And the other one was about um, midwives, which I had no idea what those were. And so I went to the session, we watched the business of being born. I don't know if you've seen that movie with Ricky Lake and Abby Epstein, mind blowing. And that started everything that started my passion. Cause I was that kid. I was that weird kid kind of growing up where I came home after school and I like loved everything about periods and pregnancy. Cause again, my mom was pregnant around that time. And I'd watch the baby story on TLC like every day. <laughs> 
that <laughs> as a 12 and 13 year old, right? But yeah, that was me. And so when I found out about midwives and what they do, I was so in our, like enthralled by it. But I also knew, as you have to know yourself, I'm not the greatest at math and science. And having to go back to school to do that, to become a midwife, just didn't seem like it was in the realm of not only possibility, but just desire. Years and years and years later, I, after I had dabbled in different things of work and career, I literally bumped into a midwifery student on our subway here in, um, I live up here in Canada in Toronto. And so on our TTC subway system, I bumped into this midwife student, talked about her work, you know, I was telling her how amazing that is, but I wish I could do something like that. And she was the one who kind of put the seed of this word doula in my head, you know, I looked it up when I went home and it said something like a, a woman who serves, which didn't really make a lot of sense to me at the time. And, you know, myself as a progressive feminist, I'm like, my mm, woman who serves, I don't really know what that, mm, I'm not so sure, right? Years later, again, this doula phrase came up again on Facebook and I looked into it more and um, I found that there was a training happening in my city. And I went to the information session and just the way that it was explained about what it really is, the impact that it really has. You know, it's not just, it's not just like an auntie or a grandmother coming over to help after the baby. It's a trained professional who's experienced and knowledgeable in this area and can guide and inform in an unbiased way to these families, to these mothers. And that to me felt like it was a much more a sustainable, much more attractive and um, something that I could relate to and make a career out of. So I know you kind of also talk about how intrigued you were with birth and how these different experiences that you had in your life really just gave you that interest. So what are some of those experiences and what did you see that made you want to improve birth experiences for other moms as well? I talk about this a lot with my clients in prenatal meetings. You know, the first couple of prenatal meetings, we really focus on the mindset and your belief system around not only just birth, but just becoming a parent. And I think, you know, I'm a, I'm a believer in, in epigenetics and, um, you know, my, the mind body connection. And, you know, I thought, I thought to myself, I watched a lot of the birth story, uh, or I'm sorry, a, a baby story on TLC. And looking back and I was like, wow, every single episode, every single family giving birth, it was always an emergency. There was always an emergency and there was always screaming and pain and an emergency. And, Maybe a part of me at the time as a kid liked the drama, but then I was like, what is that What is that doing in my psyche in terms of my belief around my body, my belief around birth and parenting and being a mother and, you know, the, the martyr syndrome and the mothers that I saw in the community who just like would go to work and like try and kill it at work, but then also come home and kill it at home and just be burnt out, but then not really have their own passions. And it's just like all these things swimming in my head. And I was like, you know, I think... I think that there's a better way. I think there can be a better way to provide um, people and parents with uh, an avenue to bring life into this world that doesn't completely drain them of life. Um, and so doing my dual work in a different way has included for me um, really understanding the history of birth work, the history of gynecology in the world and in, in North America, um, and understanding how powerful your belief can really be in terms of the outcome it can have, not only in terms of your birth experience, but how you process that. Because let's be honest, as much as we take the classes and read the books, it's the baby is the one who's in charge. Um, and so that's like the first lesson in parenthood is that you, you're you completely at the whim of whatever is going to happen in this case. So I don't even like to say birth plans. I like to say birth wishes um, and really work on being flexible on that. And so from even that level, we're talking about, okay, let's be flexible. Let's be open. Let's understand that no matter how this birth goes, what really matters is how you process it, what you make it mean or not mean afterwards, and how, that, how that's going to impact your healing in the postpartum recovery, and how that's going to impact your belief in being a parent as every stage of this little human's life um, progresses. So to kind of like jump a little bit, you also talk about how, so you're the older, oldest of two sisters, right? Or three total, so you're older of two. Um, but you call yourself the period expert. And so what, what does this mean? And like how, yeah, how does this play into your role? I guess the, the running overarching theme when I think about all my passions is just pure admiration for the female body. Um, and so when I, I was 12, when I got my first period, um, I, I wasn't the first person in my class. A couple other people had gotten it. And 
Um, it was just always a, a space of me being really excited about it. Um, and I remember I just, my mom came home with books. I think I even had one of them here on my shelf. It was like the period book and it was animated and it was illustrated. And, you know, actually when I got my period and I brought the book down to show it to my mom's friends, cause she was pregnant at the time, I showed them the book and there was like a, a picture of the anatomy of you know, your vagina, your vulva and all of that. And these grown, grown women who already had kids were a little bit appalled. They were like, wow, this is really graphic. Mm. This, this image of the female body. And I mean, I didn't think about that because my mom was just like, here's the book. If you have any questions, let me know. But I didn't really have any because I had my friends and I had the book. Um, and just hearing that these grown women had had such a visceral response to just a picture, even though the rest of the book was very age appropriately written was um, something that kind of stuck away in my head. And since then, I've just been in, enamored in terms of learning more about the, the, the human body, the female body, the periods. And so I was always that person in my friendship group who knew more than the rest of them about your period, about when to know it was coming, what to do, different life hacks and tips. I remember my best friend, she um, didn't have that close of a relationship with her mom to talk about her period. But when I talked to her about it, she actually had a better relationship with her dad. And so he was the one who went out and got her her first pads. But her first period experience was less, um, I guess, embarrassing, which it shouldn't even be, but embarrassing because I told her, you know, if you ever run out of pads, just keep extra socks in your, in your backpack. Because I had read that somewhere. And so she like this clean pair of socks in her backpack just in case because you know in case you brought up a pad when you're 11 you're gonna get made fun of so that kind of saved her on her first day and so just little things like that that my friends would come to me for which has now evolved to friends and 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 clients coming to me about fertility and how to optimize your hormones the connection with your hormones and the moon and the seasons of life and and the planet and just everything being so connected um, that's what I mean when I say I'm the period expert. I'm just so passionate about this and truly see the intricate connections with our cyclical nature. It's like when you see it, you can't unsee it. And when you see it and you, when you practice it and you practice awareness around it, you're living, you're, the life that you're living gets elevated to a level where it's just things don't have to be as hard. You know, you find yourself being in right relationship with your body as opposed to constantly fighting and having to lean in and be more like a guy, a man. Well, we're women, we're females, we're feminine, and we do all have both, but it's okay to lean into that feminine energy and that cyclical nature. You know, we're not crazy. We're actually very predictable on a cyclical level. Um, and so, yeah, I'm just doing a lot of research and practice around that. Man, so I always have a hard time splitting up the conversations into two episodes. And this one is especially difficult because Right in the middle was, I think, one of the most powerful parts of her conversation. Um, Tanisha is just so passionate about what she does that while I was talking to her, I could honestly feel her passion through the screen. Um, I felt so moved by what she had to say and her goals and what she wanted to accomplish. So I did have to cut it at a really awesome part, but next week we're gonna continue the conversation. But in the meantime, follow Tanisha at the doula experience on instagram you can see all our helpful posts and part two will be next week so we'll see you then thanks for tuning in to this episode of mom's house with krista if you're not yet subscribed go ahead and click on the subscribe button it should be down here somewhere we release new episodes every single wednesday and if you're not following us yet be sure to follow us at mommy knows best on instagram and remember if you're watching this and doubting yourself you are a great mom so thanks so much for watching and we will see you next week